Great. Well, I, would I would suggest, suggest we give two more minutes. Two more minutes. I'm just going to do, do a quick sound check. Make sure, make sure that our live stream, stream connection, connection is, is working. Okay. I'm just going to walk out the room and make sure I just, just, just talk to you. Hello. 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 Switch to your screen, yes. And you are go. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dennis. Uh, we will talk about uh, some cybersecurity awareness stuff today. Our title is Building a Resilient Digital Future. First, let me introduce you myself. Uh, my name is Enes. I'm from Turkey. Uh, I have been living in Switzerland uh, for about four years. I have a bachelor's degree in math. Uh, I worked seven years as a math teacher, then six years as a journalist, and now working as a cybersecurity analyst. Uh, let's let's start. Uh, let's talk about the importance of cybersecurity in today's digital landscape. Why cybersecurity is important for us? Because uh, we need to protect our sensitive information. We have lots of information today, and many of them are digital. When things and information becomes digital, that makes these uh, hackable, and we need to protect, we need to secure our information to defend against cyber threats that uh, becomes larger and larger day by day, and to protect our in critical infrastructure, maintaining trans, trust and reputation. Uh, this trust and reputation mainly uh, about our companies uh, if we are secure against cyber threats, against cyber attacks. Uh, our customers trust us and we have a good reputation. And uh, compliance with regulations like GDPR, cyber security is uh, mandatory for peace. 
Uh, here are some statistics, cyber, cyber criminals, cyber attacks, uh, damages, and this damage has, has cost. Here are some uh, statistics from 2021. Uh, you can see yearly, monthly, even for a second it costs 190,000 $190, US dollars per second. And these numbers are getting bigger. Uh, we will talk about uh, cybersecurity awareness, but uh, it's just one step for this. Uh, our aim should be a, should have a cybersecurity culture. Uh, this is A, B, and C, A is awareness, that what we know, and then that becomes uh, our behaviors, uh, what we do, and, and then uh, we uh, repeating that behaviors that becomes became a uh, that will become a culture uh, it's what we believe uh, and what is cyber security culture uh, it is the beliefs values and attitudes that drive employee behaviors to protect and defend the organization from cyber attacks uh, drive is important uh, it's it should it should come from our insight Somebody can say us to do this, do this to secure ourselves, to secure a good company. But it, uh, when it comes from inside, uh, it will become a culture, and uh, it's e easier to maintain that. The rapid growth of technology has advantages. We all know it. It makes our uh, life easier, more comfortable, but it also brings uh, disadvantages and troubles to us. It, uh, it makes the cyber attacks more sophisticated. For example, uh, most of us use chat GPD, not we use the uh, chat GPD. Cyber criminals also use chat GPT to, to prepare more sophisticated attacks, to prepare, to develop uh, malwares. In case of connected devices, IoTs, Internet of Things, uh, nowadays, our, our cars, our watches, even our refrigerators are connected to the internet and that makes them hackable. For example, uh, you, have a, uh, you have an apartment and you have a, a smart surveillance cameras and you don't change their uh, factory settings and their uh, Factory setting credentials are admin and admin one two three four, and every hacker can hack that in, in a minute. And not just you see your uh, house. And a, a hacker from China can see what are what you are doing, can see what your children are doing at home. Cloud computing can be more work, uh, especially after the COVID nineteen. Uh, we work. For, uh, remotely or we work hybrid and that increases the uh, attack surface we should secure uh, also our home network rise of ransomware and data breaches insider threats and employee negligence we will talk more about that employee negligence if we are not aware what's going on in uh, cyber security related we became an insider threat for our company. Look at that uh, statistic. Uh, it's insane. 95% of all successful cyber attacks is caused by human error. They are hackers nowadays. It's easier to hack people. And they hack people. How do they hack people? It's social engineering. Let's see an example.
going to need your full name, date of birth, and social security number, please. Sure, understood. Here it comes. With one click or with a phone call, you can lose your lose your confidential information. Here, Mr. Patterson's bank account is compromised. Uh, here are some other statistics from other two organizations, World Economic Forum and Verizon. People are the biggest risk, the biggest uh, ring of chain. Mm -hmm. Human related cyber attacks and vulnerabilities, what are they? Uh, let's uh, start from the bottom. Lack of reg regular cyber security awareness and training. If, uh, if you are not aware of what's going on, you will become an insider threat. And you don't have, uh, um, you, don't ha you have weak password, you don't have a strong password. We, we all should know that we should have a unique password, unique strong password for every logins, for every uh, credential. It may not be easy, but uh, I suggest you to use a password uh, manager. And social engineering. Uh, social engineering is hacking people, we will talk about it. What social engineering? Here is a definition from Wikipedia. It refers to psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. It has some types, uh, maybe phishing, maybe tailgating, maybe pretesting, pretexting, baiting, impersonation, tailgating. We will uh, talk about some of them and I will try to give examples about them. In social engineering, cyber, cyber criminals uh, mainly ask you uh, about your uh, confidential information, your phone number, your social security number, uh, your password or something that can be useful to reset your password. We're talking about cyber security today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a small papillon. And what's his name? Jameson. Jameson. <laughs> and where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensboro, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, in Hipfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. But and you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. So Jolie, 6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. <laughs> One, two, three. Spell G E M M A. Most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like, so like. Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your grandma's name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So, Maria is your password? Oh, yeah, I know my password. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, that can be easy to gain information from people with social engineering. A camera and a microphone is enough. And what's hacker? What do we understand when we hear hacker? They are not always like that. <laughs> they are making social engineering, like this lady holding that microphone, or this guy we will see. What do you think of when I say the word hacker? Some creepy dude in the basement? Well, that's a misconception. What if I told you there's a class of hackers who don't just have social skills, they have more social intelligence than anyone you'll ever meet. David Kennedy is one of them. He's what's known as a social engineer or a people hacker. His craft is to dupe you into doing things and sharing information you probably shouldn't. Can I just get your, your, your credit card number? Some use it for illegal activity. In David's case, companies pay him to find out if employees are leaving the company vulnerable. He and his team show us how it's done. Step one, spoof his number so it looks like he's calling from inside the company, and then call tech support. Hello, you there? Hello? Hi, Ken, how may I help you? I was wondering if uh, you could uh, take a look at a website. 
trying to get to is for a uh, big customer thing I'm working on for Monday, and uh, I can't seem to get to the website from my computer. Sure, uh, what's the website? I'll see if I can it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate the help. I mean, it could be a stupid thing. I'm, I'm, I'm really stuck with computers, but uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's www. Survey. That's uh, S U R V E Y. Dash Pro. Dot com. Here's what the IT guy doesn't realize. By clicking that link, he's just given David full access to his computer. Well, okay, that's weird. I just hit it and it works and it seems like it's working fine now. Awesome. I don't know what you did, man, but I really appreciate the help. Hey, no problem. That was it? We're on his computer right now. You were able to take take over this this guy's computer with them. I would say like under two minutes. Under two minutes, yeah. Under two minutes took over his entire computer and, and think of it as not just his computer, but it's pretty much a downfall of the entire company. With one click, we can give our confidential information to hackers or our company's confidential information under two minutes with a click. Let's talk about another uh, kind of social engineering. How many people would you hold for the door? Someone in a wheelchair, someone with crutches, or someone pregnant? We will talk about and we will see some examples about tailgating. That's tailgating. You can, you, you shouldn't open a, a door, especially a confidential door, to others, and be aware of what's happening. Because mm, people who has malicious intentions are waiting out there. We should be suspicious. That kind of door maybe uh, protects us or protect our company from tailgating. It's also called uh, piggybacking. But uh, cybersecurity awareness and uh, aware of what's going on will help us to protect ourselves from tailgating. And what's phishing? There are uh, some types of phishing, like spear phishing, bailing, smishing, wishing. Uh, phishing is made especially with uh, email. When it's, uh, when it's done to a group of people, it's spear phishing. When it's done to a, a whale, a, what's whale? A CEO or a CTO, it mm -hmm. becomes a whaling. When it's done with uh, SMS, with a uh, mobile phone, it's smishing. When it's done with voice, it's wishing. Uh, phishing emails or phishing uh, SMS are uh, includes an attachment or uh, a clickable link, or it, uh, it uh, or it can it can be there. Uh, it wants to uh, up update your password. You click the link. You go a uh, fake internet site, some, uh, for example, uh, Facebook, but it's not Facebook. You give your credentials there, and it's done. You lose your account. Common features of phishing emails, they are too good to be true. Maybe uh, someone uh, write it there, you want an iPhone or something else. They create sense of urgency. They include suspicious hyperlinks. They have malicious attachments. And uh, they are mainly from unexpected uh, emails, from unusual senders. From, from, for example, you don't have any contact from China and you get a, an email from China. Or you don't have any contact uh, from Nigeria and you, you get an email from someone in Nigeria. It, it's not uh, always with a mail. We, we saw at the beginning Mr. Patterson. Uh, that was a wishing phone call. Uh, for example, in, uh, in my country, in Turkey, there are lots of uh, wishings uh, nowadays, and even high educated people are believing that, uh, that hackers, that human hackers, and they are giving tons of money. It's unbelievable, but even professors, they give money to them. They are calling, that they are, they are saying, uh, your identity is used by a terrorist organization and they are giving you a sense of urgency. <coughs> they don't let you to think. It's, it's the most important thing to 
think about it. What am I doing? Stop and think. And it's, <clears throat> actually, could we maybe stop and take a couple of questions? Because I think people might have a few questions for yeah, yeah. these things. Yeah. Yes, please. If you click one of them and just close it again, still are we in danger? Uh, sometimes, when if you click, sometimes you can you don't uh, notice it, but you can download a malicious uh, software or a malicious file, uh, or when you click it, it takes you at an internet site. You can you can notice it before you uh, enter your credentials, then uh, nothing happens. But if you don't notice, okay, how can we understand the current situation? Yeah, for example, uh, that's a phishing that's a phishing email. Mm -hmm. uh, it's written there: urgent action required. That that gives you a sense of urgency. Here is an uh, here is an email. Look at that. It's that it's not a genuine email. It's, it's it looks like from Microsoft, but it's not from Microsoft. You should uh, look at the domain name. They they put it there uh, a logo of uh, Office 365. To to yeah, it seems uh, real, but it's not. Uh, you should read it carefully. There are. Uh, Spelling mistakes. Yes, spelling <laughs> mistakes. You should, uh, yeah, you should be careful and please click on the link to verify your account. And you are going to the that domain, zx.html, not Microsoft. And if you click and if you enter your credentials there, you will lose your account. Yes. Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. And then what happens if you lose your account? Maybe uh, if I'm a hacker, I take your account, for example, uh, I take your Instagram account and I send uh, messages to Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. I need money. Uh, yes, I need money or uh, I send a link to him and he clicks and I take his account and then I send a message to Oleg and all I click it and I take his account and uh, I can do same thing from three different accounts and uh, yeah people can believe it easily. Yeah I know Ibrahim, I know Blake and they send bots. Mm -hmm. Yeah it should be true. Yeah. I have another question. Yes. Please. What is tailgating? Tailgating uh, uh, here is a secure door. It's yes, 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 yes. Oh. Uh, I have a badge to open it. And I, I saw uh, Oleg is hey here. Buddy, you know I forgot my badge oh, today, yes. but let's go have lunch. Uh, please, please. Uh, can, can, I, can I see your badge? What, where is your badge? I forgot it at home. I'm so sorry. I ah, just, I'm just, sorry. Oh, man. You know, I'm just working upstairs. Ah, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Dude, I see you every sorry. lunch. I see you every day. <laughs> I, I shouldn't. That's. He's not convinced. GPT, you have a typical case that you, can happen right now with post finance. When you call post finance, they register your voice. If you call again, they will know it's you because it's your voice. There was a case in the UK where people would well, take a video of you or they would call you, register your voice, then they use AI to write another text, then they call the bank. And the bank recognizes your voice. Mm -hmm. They say, Oh, what's my bank account? Oh, uh, you have money, yeah? Please send the money there. And then, because they recognize you, they will make the payment. Yeah. 
And typically, when I have uh, when I have post finance, I always tell them please delete my I don't want any print of my box because mm -hmm. people can find video of me on, on YouTube. Then they can take my box and call the bank and tell me. You know. mm -hmm. And is it always about money at the end? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's no. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, credential they they. They go there to uh, to store uh, credentials, customer credentials, and then uh, they use these credentials for another attack, or again for they sell for money. Mm -hmm. May I give an example? Yeah. Uh, just this is just a movie. One guy, one hacker, steals some data of some uh, people and. The uh, hackers say, uh, well, they were uh, hacker were pushing other people to do some uh, some stuff, some uh, bad things, some crimes, killing someone, stealing something, and then uh, after first step, uh, they are like a puppet in their hand. Okay, that's scary. That's scarier than the money for me. <laughs> I, I did that basically. Mm. I mean, just like if I think. My, my email account would be taken over. It would be so much hassle, right? I mean, there's so much password resets which go over my email, mm -hmm. but there's, I don't know, a hundred services that the attacker can take over. There's, uh, I mean, even just beyond the, the, the damage, the direct damage, it's a, it'd be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I can relate a lot to this um, abstract, so I will need like a landscape, you know, where I can see how, for example, this, you know, is the uh, passwords. I don't know automatically, okay, my mails are connected to this and this. Mm -hmm. I don't, it's like so abstract. Right. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. If and your mails are not important in yeah, any way, Yeah, I right? even yeah. don't read them. <laughs> 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 but, but Why I just want to read my email? Yeah. So they should read really now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I will also uh, mention later, but uh, multi-factor authentication is also important for this password. And uh, there is an, uh, another statistic about that 99 percent uh, identity hackers, uh, identity hackings could be stopped by MFA, multi-factor mm -hmm. authentication. It's important. It's a small thing. Actually, just in the interest of time, as it's half past 12 and I know people really need to go at 1, I would suggest we switch to Ibrahim now, if that's okay for you. Mm -hmm. And then we can save the, the, the details for the discussion. And if Ibrahim can do his presentation in 10, 15 minutes, then we still have time for, for some more of this really nice yes, debate. Yes. Is that okay for you? Oh yeah, that's all okay for me. Thank you, Andes. You're welcome. Thank you. So I think you can just short. Will you also share your slides? Yeah. Okay. My presentation is about uh, secure documents and today, as you all know, we, have, uh, we are using so many different types of documents as for our bills, for our certificates, uh, banking account and we, are, we receive so many email, so many uh, uh, documents per email and we, uh, we cannot know sometimes are they real, original, or uh, fake. And I'm trying to explain Proxeus in this aspect, because Proxeus can uh, provide you a, <coughs> a valuable document. And you can generate any kind of document, depending on your imagination. We will see uh, some examples of, uh, we will give some examples and then uh, make a demo. For history, uh, 2017 is project's uh, start date, 
Then uh, in 2018, it became the uh, most successful decentralized autonomous uh, organization in Switzerland. Then uh, association, uh, Proxius Association uh, established. And today, uh, the project maintained by uh, ESPRO, if you know, if you don't know, it's, uh, it is um, an, an Ukrainian uh, company. And this is uh, from the from the previous uh, one of the previous uh, meetings, which uh, to create another note, another uh, special, uh, another uh, feature of the application. And <coughs> this uh, guy uh, on the right side is the founder of the project. Photo taken by Oleg. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> Uh, here you can uh, explain some basic uh, or some main uh, information about the application. It's uh, it based blockchain and uh, transform data from form to template and then uh, record that to the blockchain and with this way we can validate the documents. Uh, it can uh, it provide us uh, a lot flexibility and uh, so many uh, different type of document creation capability ability such as sorry form that yes uh, form is the part that we need to use to import our data to the template uh, in this form uh, there are some validation rules and we don't need to write some any code for that. And this is a local application, we don't need to know any code, just you can come and use, create your own form and template and workload as we will do. And this is an example of workflow, uh, but we will make a simpler one. We can uh, use them for certificates, for proof of validation documents, for ownership of any uh, important like car, like house, or maybe maybe in the feature uh, in the close feature for marriage for something else. But for that we need to uh, know your customer process, and it is something else. Uh, for verification, uh, when we create a PDF, a document with proxies, we can validate. Uh, we can check if it's valid or not. <laughs> And also, we can ask for signature from other people that, uh, that can make it uh, valid and uh, reflect other people's uh, OK, let's say. And this is an example of uh, uh, like a calculation. Uh, they did design by Oleg and for the purpose of this design was calculating a uh, salary for a uh, freelance worker. And this was, I think, a few months ago. Yes, yeah, so it was four months ago. Does, was anyone here at the Thomas's presentation about accounting? So towards, towards the end of that presentation, uh, there was kind of like a challenge in the room. Who can, who can help freelancers decide their salaries? And so we literally made this at, the last, at that brown bag. We made this quick. Financial plan. And <coughs> this is a theoretic and boring uh, side of presentation. And then now we can start for demo. Any questions? Before, yeah. Before that, uh, for last step, this is the uh, domain name that we can use and try now. And if you, uh, after uh, presentation. If you have any suggestion, you can use this page uh, in our GitHub account, uh, github.com, Proxius Hub Discussion Forum. There is a, a, a title for this presentation, this Bromwick, and you can find there and suggest if there is anything you want to add and expect to be. We'll share all the links in the, channel, in the Slack channel as well. Any question? I think what would be interesting is to rethink a bit 
about very concrete use cases, like again, like for a hospital, for a university, or for a co-working space. Yeah. Like where is this useful to have secure documents where it's very clear and <coughs> tractable who for signed it in what mm -hmm. version, etc. Uh, for now, we can create certificates. You can imagine that as a diploma for a university or uh, for uh, a proof of work for a, um, an activity like today or an hackathon um, for a bill. Then there, it depends on your imagination. Our demo will be about uh, certification, but you can uh, create a various template as you wish. Then uh, you can use that template. And also, there is a signature part. You can ask for a signature. Then if other people sign it, then it could be an agreement, any kind of agreement. Um, Should we show your demo and then maybe we can... Yeah, we can after demo it could be more clear. Definitely. Yeah, this is Except the mm -hmm. this is the beginning of the uh, this is the home page actually. Uh, for logging or for sign up, uh, you need to have a MetaMask wallet because uh, this is how it works uh, for registration and for payment and for other things. Mm -hmm. But you don't just email the password. Yeah, <coughs> for now you don't need to concern about it. In this part, without logging, uh, you can verify a document and just uh, click here and drag and drop or just uh, choose a file from uh, any, uh, any of those files you have. For now, I, I didn't uh, download the latest uh, files. We will create and then uh, validate. Then I will log in with MetaMask wallet. This is a uh, page you will see, but except uh, this workflows. And here you will start. You need to start from form part. You need to create a form. This is the button that you can create uh, provide you that ability uh, for demo form. Uh, I will use a current uh, form for this one. These are the components that we can use. Uh, we can just click here and uh, just try and drop other side and create uh, various type of forms. These are familiar from uh, forms probably you, you have been seeing uh, those kind of forms previously. Uh, <coughs> for our certificate, we will need a participant's name and a team name. This, uh, this is another type of uh, property, another type of sort of component, and uh, we fill the the options here. This is like a select box. Uh, when we save this part, then we will uh, come to the template part. This was a uh, data hack base span, and this is the template part. Uh, we need to open the uh, same form template. Here uh, you can see the uh, you can see variables. These are uh, important. Then you, you need to uh, copy these variables and paste them into the document, into your template. Uh, we already created the template. This is the template, and you can just uh, click here and uh, find the file from your computer for your from your local and upload it, or uh, just drag and drop. And this is the template. Uh, my participants is here in this part, and uh, team name is in this part. When I fill the form in, in uh, with some content, it will be reflected to the form uh, to the template, and we we'll, we can check it. The, that input dot participants is here, and therefore Alex, uh, the name is uh, reflected to the same place. And for team, I can just uh, check any of the any of the the team. This is just an example; it's not real. Therefore. Uh, just randomly picked one of them, and here I can see the uh, the document how it look like looks like, and I'm happy with that. Then I uh, I can continue. I save it and I can continue for for workflow parts. Uh, 
you can select their uh, select the items and the components from uh, this part. It should start with start. Then uh, with our form, we already did that. Form is here, and just uh, for sh making it more clear, maybe I can uh, delete the connection. Yeah, you you can drag and drop uh, that. Uh, items here, then uh, you can connect them basically like a simple tool. This is not necessary for our case. And after saving, uh, we can run the workflow. Then we can uh, fill uh, original data as we want and a team name. After that, we can go to the next uh, step. Additional data uh, is not an uh, important part in this case. Then uh, this, in this step uh, we will be asked for a payment after confirmation uh, and a few seconds. In the document will be recorded to the blockchain network and we will have a A small data, I don't know how I can say. A small data will be recorded to the, uh, the system. Hash. Hash. Hash, but uh, <coughs> okay. Digital signature. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this will be used for ver uh, verification. Here uh, there are a few options. This is for make it more visible or just for preview, and this uh, button for uh, downloading it as a PDF and this is download for as a word and the most important part for make it more valid uh, you can ask for signature for now uh, I'm asking for a signature from Oleg and now we will uh, have a document and signature requested now if he uh, accept of or if he sign will be a new status status sign instead of pending so I can check it and I sign it looks mm -hmm. okay and again there's this what so what we're paying is a what's known as a gas fee it's a very very small amount of money that is required by this particular blockchain to make an entry in the blockchain and that's it. It's signed. It takes. A f it also takes a few minutes for the document to process. But is it possible? No. Sorry, my computer's. Where is the document stored? I mean, it's not on the blockchain, I guess. No, no, no. It's separate. It's, oh. it's stored uh, locally on the server mm -hmm. until you you delete it or if it expires. Mm -hmm. um, and only the hash, a tiny cryptographic yes, signature, is in the blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see the status is changed, signed, and uh, for for this step, if you imagine Oleg as a professor in the university, which is correct, <laughs> and uh, he can give diploma and sign it on his personal account uh, or an official account actually, uh, then it will be a diploma, and when people download the PDF down their document. They will be seen like that for some uh, instructions to how to validate it. Now we will do this part. For validation or for verification, uh, by the way, you can see all documents here uh, and for your questions answer. Uh, these are all documents we created. Even if we delete those documents, still we can validate. For verification, inside of an uh, app, if you log in, you can uh, find the verification button at the, le at the left side. And you can select the PDF or drag and drop. Then you will see a uh, document is valid. And if you look to the details, you can see file hash number and signers. And you can check. Uh, 
on the side of uh, any official account. For example, if it would be a uh, diploma, you will see this uh, has been signed by Oleg and you can uh, see his address in this official address and you can compare. And this was just a certificate. You can use it for generating diploma, making agreement like someone selling his car, someone buying and with uh, that agreement template you can uh, use that uh, workflow for many people and they can uh, fill out the form like car model, uh, age, color and numbers etc. Then you can uh, ask for signature request from that people who buy or sell and when they sign it Okay, you don't need to go to police office and do some uh, boring stuff. Or, I mean, one of the most spectacular demos that Proxius made when it was still a company. I don't know if you, you guys really understood the context from the beginning. So this was a commercial and very, very successful ICO, initial coin offering. There was a bit of a mistake on the first slide. So it's, it, there was a doubt, but it was a very successful ICO. So they raised funds while all these blockchain projects a few years ago were having a very hype moment. Um, and the company um, was closed for, for various reasons uh, in 2020, just around the corona hit. And Proxy Association was established here at Effinger to continue maintaining the product in open source form. So it was commercial before, everything you saw was part of a commercial product. Now it's an open source. So to your question, where is the data stored? It's wherever the heck you want to store the data. So you install it on your machine, your laptop, or on some server, and that's where the data is stored. And the Proxy Association maintains it. But one of their, one of their biggest um, customers or most important demos was the Handelsregister of the Canton of Zug. So it was the process of registering a company that was um, seen as very interesting. And the idea that you could shorten the time from several weeks or days to minutes, to hours or minutes to register a company was um, was part of the, I, th I think we don't need to show people Docker Hub, but yeah, Docker Hub is right now the easiest way to kind of install it on your laptop. Right? Yeah. Uh, but let's let's try to, let's to try to use some, some minutes to remaining to, to do a bit of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a Medium blog, so if you go medium.com slash proxies, there's a lot of um, stories like from us, uh, and starting from 2020, that's me, Vivian, Ibrahim, a couple of other people. Before that, you can learn about the other things the company was doing. And just I wanted to show how uh, any donut in Docker Hub. Ah, sure. Yeah. This is uh, this is the main uh, repo of. Uh, our application, Proxius, Proxius Core, and with uh, one over one million uh, one million uh, download, uh, you can see hype in another <laughs> aspect. Yeah. It's quite a responsibility to manage this uh, big big project, but we're a very small association. But Ibrahim uh, joined shortly after completing a Power Coders course, and he's been doing an internship since January. So you've seen him working at Effinger. On. And everything you just saw in this demo has been made partially possible through his work and his support of last month. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Ruben. I see you very much. Actually, I did that in, in the beginning, therefore, maybe. So, we've got eight minutes till some of you need to go. I would really love to see the two of you. Maybe if NSC could also come up and maybe yeah. answer some. Yeah. Thank you, Ibrahim, for the presentation. <laughs> I just want to ask you, how do you see your worlds connecting? You talked about cyber and you talked about information. Where is the best chance for, for us here to, like, what, what do you think we should do today to improve our security awareness? Yeah, I see security is connected to nearly every a part of, not just IT, every part of our life. 
we should aware all of us, even we are not working in IT world, we should aware what's happening. It's I think it's mandatory nowadays for for our children, for every every for everyone to secure our information. Information security is important nowadays. Because all informations are nearly all information are digital. Mm -hmm. Like this complex. I think we we are human but in in these days we have a kind of uh, digital reflection but not in one place, in maybe thousands of places every uh, so every place, social media and like uh, every point that we touch and that means information is now people and for security part I think most important part is being aware how dangerous could it be because if we lose our data, if we lose our information, that means we lose our uh, control. Someone else can use us, like the puppet, as I said before. And most important step step is awareness. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, if we understand the danger, how could it be? Then uh, this culture that from the beginning of the presentation will uh, be uh, built and then we, we will not need to be concerned about our future, our data, our security, our existence in the digital world. So is it, is it a bit like, some, we used to say the information superhighway, that, I think that term is now out of, out of use, but you, would you say it's like a bit like with roads? I mean, we know that Roads are dangerous, people get killed every day on roads, but we also know how to be aware of traffic as we cross the street yeah. every day or send our children to school or, you know, we calculate the risks a bit like as a matter of habit rather than having to worry about it every day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Good example. How safe is a password manager? Depends on password manager. What would you recommend? Yeah, yeah, we can also say how say a door lock, uh, a, a thief can open it, but we use it to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Nothing is safe. There is no safe system, but uh, we should make, uh, we should harden the systems for uh, for cyber criminals. We we don't uh, leave the door open. But isn't it a door to all the passwords? I mean, aren't then all the passwords in that one place and somebody just has to hack it and then has it all? Uh, somebody can open the door, but uh, find uh, the passwords, uh, like they are not uh, stay there, uncrypted. Okay. Can I add here something about Bitwarden? Bitwarden is an open source uh, password manager and they encrypt your keys, your your password actually in into their uh, data center, and they don't know what your password is. That means it's secure. And until they broke uh, that uh, encryption uh, function of method SHA two two five six. For now, this is the latest version, I think. And it was it was hacked yesterday. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No. So Bit Bitwarden is the product that, that I'm quite a fan of because it's 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 like proxies. It's open source. They have a commercial offering, so you can pay Bitwarden, or you can just download it and run it on your own local server. Um, and one password, this one on the left, that's kind of the most popular product. So a lot of IT departments, a lot of companies yeah. in, in Switzerland. I also use that. Use one password. And then there's there's tons of alternatives like KeePass. That's quite quite a small popular app that people use, and that just keeps your password your machine. Key KeePass is hacked. Um, no, Bitwarden. I mean, it wasn't a spe spectacular hack you hear in the news about. It's more that like one, you know, the popular deployment method used to to install Bitwarden was 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 proven to be compromised, like literally this week. And you know, the point is, it's 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 always it's always a moving target. You know, 
these, these fixes, they will get these problems, they get fixed, and you know, and a lot of people, yeah, they have IT departments, right, to keep installing patches and keep you safe. And if you're a freelancer, you maybe don't have an IT person, unless it's a friendly IT person, you know, in the co-working space. There's one in the corner there, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Always, you know. But that's that's the thing. You've got if there's a lot of choices, and ultimately you need to be comfortable in your computing environment, and you know, and, and maybe in a in this network. So maybe just to give a little bit of advertising for the FBI on there, uh, here or the the community members here, we have a channel in the F Finger Slack called InfoSec. We're still only seven people, so please join us. You'll see Ibrahim, myself, Marcos, thank you for joining us, Stefan, and a couple of others. And the idea is that we just have a, a Slack channel to help you, to answer any questions you have, to recommend password managers, or share with you the latest and greatest tips from the Swiss government in particular. They've been, since the beginning of the year, constantly under cyber attacks. And so the... Um, the, the the federal administration they're under a lot of pressure right now because they're so much target now of, of cyber threat. So ex I expect good things. I'm positive. I think this is a good thing for them to be under pressure. It hopefully leads to good tools, like for example the the Swiss uh, government's Proxius service. It's not Proxius, but this is exactly what Ibrahim just demoed. Just the service that is used by the Swiss government to validate their documents. I mean, this is right now only accessible to members of government, but the fact that it's there and it's being used and it's important, the message is spreading, people are going to start taking more care about their digital signatures. So here you can check whether a document that you have from the government is actually really from the government. Yeah, exactly. Everyone can check, but only the government can issue a document. Correct. Mm -hmm. That means maybe in a gross feature we can create our own documents and but it sign them and make them valid. For now you cannot just sign an online document with Proxius because they don't know who you are, just there are some numbers. But maybe in a gross feature they will know who you are, who is this number and what does that mean? The people accept this agreement or something else. If you have an electronic ID, so to yeah. speak, which the population mm -hmm. decided that the government should de develop this and not public, uh, private organizations. That, uh, a few weeks ago, there were in a cartoon that, uh, called Open Legal Lab. There were a team, they were uh, trying to solve a problem, or not a problem, trying to make something easier, like credentials, they were trying to import a uh, credential, but with in a secure way for uh, some people. It's in one aspect, it's similar to uh, what we are trying to do because they totally they will be something that one by one it's, it doesn't make sense maybe, but with that credential things. And, and uh, all the tools are getting smarter. I mean, like if you're using Gmail, you might just click on the on the name of the person. So here I got an email from Urbane Dörfer, you know, and then here I can see the Sicherheit. I, I, can, I can click here on Informationen, and I can check that, I mean, Google is basically giving me some, some info, it, 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 explaining to me why I should be able to trust this email. And also the same thing is this little, this little um, lock at the top of every browser, you know, it's giving you details. And it's, it's not that you can just trust this information. But you know, I think this uh, the you know all this software on IT infrastructure we're using is going to improve and is improving. And if we're a little bit proactive, a little bit learn some of the easy methods to check that the emails are genuine and documents are genuine, would help. But yeah, um, I we need to really close the brown bag because people need to get back to work. Any last questions or thoughts? All right, thank you very much. Jonas and Ibrahim, and to all of you, please take a baklava on your way out as you tailgate back into the co-working space. Thank you. Thank you.